Okay, guys and gals, thanks for tuning in. This is Steven here. At the making of this video on uh, Tuesday, May 1st, 2018, I have 16.75 hours on the Mini Plane Top 80 uh, 2017 model. This is the ABM model, which means it's the weight shift version. Uh, Mini Plane uh, builds the frame and the cage and the netting. And then top 80 is the engine that's put onto the frame. So you could buy a top 80, um, you know, Maverick or something, or a top 80, uh, you know, Fresh Breeze. You can buy the motor separately and then put it onto whatever frame you want to put it onto, or you could make one by yourself. So don't think that just because you want a top 80, you have to buy a mini plane frame, or if you want a mini plane frame, you don't have to buy a top 80. Like you can mix and match. I imagine that that would be a little more expensive. Anyway, um, I just want to go through uh, some of the disadvantages of having a mini plane. Um, I am not regretful of my purchase of one, so I want that to be clear at the outset. There's probably many good motors out there, uh, many good ones for you. Not every motor is right for every person, obviously. Full disclaimer, I do not work for mini plane. I do not work for any paramotoring or paragliding company. Um, I don't care if you buy one or not. Um, actually, I, I, I guess I do hope you buy something because it's always fun to fly with other, with other people. But whether it's a mini plane or something else, um, I hope you just get some good information here to help you make a good decision. So, Okay, so my first beef with the mini plane top 80 is that there were too many voices when I was trying to put it together. Um, I got the unit uh, from my instructor and then I took it back to my house and then I put it together on my own because I wanted to learn how to do stuff and so I could have ownership over the motor. And um, I went onto the uh, official mini plane website which looks like it was made back when I was a freshman in high school. Um, I don't know if you guys remember things like Angel Fire or GeoCities but the website has like animated GIFs. Um, which are like moving images. Uh, it looks like it was made by like a ninth grader um, 20 years ago. So uh, totally uh, not fitting for a company that uh, makes this type of motor. That thing should for sure be updated. It's an embarrassment. And um, it's in like, you know, Italian or these different languages. There's spelling mistakes. There's grammar mistakes. It's hard to read. Um, and... Uh, I would not recommend going to that website. I just think it's very poor of the company to have that be the face of their company for people who are buying a unit that could, you know, potentially hurt them. You know, you just, it's a total joke. So um, you can go to um, uh, Mini Plane USA. I, I think that's Chad Bastian out in California. Uh, his website's better because he has a little how to on how to assemble. Uh, the unit that's better, but then um, stuff that he says on his website uh, seems to be uh, not lining up perfectly with stuff that uh, Southwest Air Sports says about the mini plane top 80. So as someone who's new into this arena, I was kind of frustrated because I was like, guys, this this engine's been around, you know, for. Uh, you know, I don't know, 20 years or something, and you think that people would have it dialed in. Um, you know, you need this type of fuel, you need this type of thread lock, this is where you should put the thread lock, this is how tight you should have all these different bolts and nuts and stuff. And uh, that was not my experience, so that was kind of frustrating. I thought it was going to be more of a science, and it was not. So my first big beef is that there's just too many voices and I wish someone would just say this is the exact way you're supposed to do it and here's why and it seems like everyone's got their own little take. Maybe I'm naive, this is my first uh, you know, small engine that I've owned so it, maybe it's part of the learning curve but um, it, it was just like a hodgepodge of oh this person says this, this person says that, then I'm asking my friends who have them like well what did you do for this or what did you do for that and um, it was you know, I'm just getting advice from all these different sources. So that was a little bit disconcerting. Okay, so that's my, that's my first point. Um, second point is, uh, this is uh, maybe a little bit picky, but the harness on the mini plane uh, top 80 does not easily detach from the unit. 
So I was watching videos for like this, the Fresh Breeze one, and you can take the harness off and use it for, for kiting. And in this case, you have to get a different harness or else take a bunch of crap off and then put it back on. Not convenient at all. I've never even done it. So if you're going to do separate cutting practice or, you know, you watch Jeff Goins DVDs, how he's like, you know, climbing walls and trees and buildings and crap. Looks really cool, uh, but it's not worth the hassle. So you'd want to get a second kiting harness to make that happen. Um, uh, let's see, my third point, and these are in no particular order. Um, as you see in the video, there's these plastic uh, like tubes that are go on the outside of the frame to protect the lines from chafing and uh, on the side of the um, on the side of the fabric where the net attaches to the uh, to the like frame. Um, and it just looks kind of cheap that you have to put these extra plastic pieces on it. Um, I, I guess it just looks cheap. They stay on fine. They're they're black in color, but you know it's just like hey, bust out the super glue and the scotch tape and you know some toothpicks, and we'll we'll just kind of put this thing together. It, it it doesn't leave for an aesthetically pleasing look. Um, so I thought maybe that could have been done a little bit better. I don't know how. You know, um, I'm not blaming anyone for it. It just it just looks kind of cheap. So. Uh, one other thing I wanted to add about this uh, on the point about like things looking kind of cheap. Um, when I have to attach the air box to the frame with a zip tie, I'm like, really? <laughs> um, man, I mean, that, 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 like, is this a fifth grade project here? Um, again, it works great. Um, it, it just aesthetically, this does not look super pleasing, and you would think for over five grand, close to six grand, that they would have a better solution than taking a zip tie to the top of the airbox hole and wrapping it around one of the um, radial arms. Like, um, again, it looks like a fifth grader put this thing together, you know, for a project. Um, so not super great. Um, and uh, I guess a, a, a final point on quality. Um, I had a, another video that I made where I showed the uh, the one of the air tubes uh, cracked and um, and this basically disintegrated and this was after I don't know maybe around 10 hours of use and I like totally baby this this motor and it just seemed like you know for the amount of money that you're paying for this thing to have something fail that drastically was like uh, you know something was missed in the execution or in the in the checkout process of the motor, so or uh, the motor in the frame, um, I just thought that that was poor quality. I thought that was unacceptable, and um, so I made a video and I let people know. All right, uh, number four, um, the netting um, seems pretty thin and uh, not super sturdy. I'm sure I could tighten it a little bit more down at the bottom there, um, and I know that the netting is like. It's, it's supposed to protect you from the prop when you start or something or from your hand going back into it, okay? So maybe it's not meant to, you know, you know take, you know, uh, uh, you know Le LeBron James charging through it to go into the prop. It's not supposed to stand up to that type of force. So, okay, I, I get it. Um, but it just seemed a little bit thin um, compared to other videos where I've seen um, the netting that they use. So I don't have anything to compare that to. It's just my visual assessment, but it seemed a little thin and not super sturdy. Um, so that's my fourth point. Um, my fifth point is that, uh, the paint, uh, the yellow paint and the black paint, uh, comes off really easily. I've been kind of pissed off and disappointed, frankly. I've got this brand new, pretty, you know, motor and frame and stuff. And here I have wherever two metal pieces touch, I've got paint rubbing off. So I went and I bought some, you know, waterproof white, you know, medical tape. And I've been taping up parts of the frame so that where the two metal things touch, they don't rub against one another and take off the paint. Um, it just seemed totally cheap. Like this was happening within, you know, I don't know, two to three weeks or something like paint was already coming off. And I was like, are you serious? Like I paid over five grand for this thing and 
uh, we got paint rubbing off. Like maybe it needs a clear coat or something. I don't know. Fix it. Like I shouldn't have be. I shouldn't have to put tape on this brand new machine. So um, beware of that. I'm not sure if the other uh, if other manufacturers are having that problem too. But as you saw, as you can see in the video, the spots where I got the uh, white tape is where that rubbing is happening and paint is coming off. Um, okay, uh, and also I put some uh, tape down on the bottom because uh, when you tilt the motor forward to put it onto your, to your back, there's a part where the um, black rubber strips don't, uh, uh, are not uh, protecting the yellow frame from the ground so that can get scraped up. So I just wanted to pre preserve that. It looks crappy and stupid. Maybe I'll get some black tape or something to make it look better. But I just wish that the paint job would be better so that that wouldn't be happening. Um, that was point number five. Uh, point number six is uh, the fuel cap is not the easiest to, to, to reach. So um, you either have to have a fuel can that has a long uh, uh, nozzle. You can see one of my other videos that I have about what uh, can that I got or else uh, you need to get a funnel. So um, I just wish that were a little easier. I had one spill at the gas station that kind of sucked um, with the gasoline and, and oil. So um, you need to get a long funnel because it's not super easy to get in and out of there. Um, but other than that, uh, those are uh, some of the uh, drawbacks of having the uh, motor. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I guess the biggest frustration to me has been the uh, the paint thing, and um, when I was putting it together, just all the voices about who says to do what. Um, but anyway, I hope that this was helpful to you, and uh, good luck with whatever you, you decide to do. Thanks.